Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast for the final round in Group F match between Olivier Dulac and his yellow Wood Elves. He won the toss and chose to kick up against Shirts with his uh, black and white undead, not bad at all. I can show you the table here and Olivier Dulac with two wins is guaranteed to qualify. If he gets a draw at least, he will also get top place. So he does have to play for that minimum. There's a chance that if Schertz can win this, there is a chance that he can, uh, uh, well, you know, that Teddy Toms could also win and then it would go to touchdown scored. So it's possible, it's possible, but, you know, he's got a lot of work to do, Schertz here. It's, it's very likely that he's going out, I would say. Um, but, you know, he's got a chance, right? If, if he can win this game, he's got a chance. So it's all to play for for him, that's for sure. And I can tell you that he is American, shirts, and he qualified through the Crenbol Worlds Qualifier. Olivier Dulac is French, qualified through the Vent des Gobs League. I refuse to uh, attempt to butcher the French language, so I shall do it on my own terms. Of, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, obviously, also Olivier Dulac is the number one tabletop player in the world with Skaven. Funnily enough, not with Wood Elves, uh, with Skaven. But he's gone for a very interesting one turny team here, right? He's got two sidestep catchers. So he's got two sidestep catchers and a stand firm tree. So he's got, he's got a very hard team to one turn against. And obviously with a, with a frenzy and sidesteppers of his own, he's actually got a really good chance of one turning himself. Of course, there's a stripper and the wrestler and uh, yeah, interesting. And then the jump up tree is wild. The jump up tree is absolutely wild. Um, the flaming tree is just for halflings until they hopefully extend it out to other things. And shirts here has got his couple of guards. He's got a tackler, he's got a wrestler, he's got a, a couple of blockers. So pretty standard skill package for shirts also shirts has got the beast man cheerleaders which is kind of cool All right but he really needs to bang out olivia to like hard here and if he bangs him out hard he could win right but i think i think it needs to be a bit of a dicing but uh we shall see i mean it's it's not been a dicing has it he's just instantly got blitzed on and olivia de has made it two two dodges and a rush that's outrageous dice rolling by Olivier Dulac. Absolutely outrageous. Disgusting dice rolling. Um, so really, the, the jump up for trees mostly just like lets them stand up. Do you know what I mean? So like you don't need a roll to stand up. You just you just choose the jump up and uh, and get him up. I'm not sure you need three dice there with um, having tackle, but I understand making sure. So like using it to block is like you know you could technically use him to jump up and block, but obviously he's going to be he's rubbish at jumping up and blocking. You just use it so you don't need to uh, roll the stand up for him. I'm a bit concerned that this guy hasn't moved yet because he isn't he shouldn't be dodging, so he should have stood up already. There we go. And this ghoul tries to dodge, fails, gets KO'd, and. We will have an immediate two dice on the ball, I think. Which is... Oh, no. I well, maybe, I guess. Um, this gives him the two plus through. Well, I say two plus through just to free me through. I mean, surely you have to go for the ball. It might be a rush though, right? It's a long way to go. It is a rush. Uses it. Fails. Oh my goodness. There's a zombie there. He can rush. He can foul. He doesn't even have to rush. Oh, let's go. Gets the knockdown. This is a bit of a dream. A bit of a dream start now. It's gone from a nightmare start to a dream start. If he can foul out the stripper instantly. Oh no, he's moved away! No, stay if he resists! More assists! 
No! No, he didn't even re-roll it! No! 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 You were hitting you were hitting a war dancer and you could have fouled a war dancer! No! I guess he just misclicked using the reroll, right? Like that's the only thing that makes sense is that he misclicked using the reroll. That's the only thing that makes sense. Also, I would have had a full tie cage here, right? Just fully committed to the foul. Like you just have to, right? Fouling the fouling the size the strip ball away is incredible. So um, still still make this block because he's mighty blown a uh, mighty blown a dancer. If you're lucky, you can kill this dancer. And then foul and kill this dancer. But yeah, I would have absolutely kept the, the cage. And yes, I know he's a dancer. I don't care. I'm all in these dice rolls, right? You've got to get lucky to win, right? You've got to get lucky. You've got to win this game. You cannot beat Olivier Dulac without being lucky. With undead into wood elves. You have to get lucky. Full cage here. Three assist foul. Hope you hope you kill him. But yeah, I, I guess he just he must have misclicked, right? Because you, you have to. You absolutely have to reroll that hit. Oh, he's going to chain the dancer in. Very nice. Really nice. And chains in the tree there. Oh, 1D. 1D? <laughs> Maybe he wants this dancer to stay alive so he can, he can just keep failing dice rolls. <laughs> and now he just gets the hell out of there. Understandable. <laughs> he makes like a tree and gets out of there, yeah. Tree dice gets the power. Oh, I thought he'd have gone in, in front, right, so that this would be a three dice and he couldn't sidestep into the ball. No, oh, I thought he was going to punch the tree. I guess he couldn't, right? Because there was no one cancelling the assist. So, yeah. I think Olivier is going for his line again. Yeah, his Olivier's Olivier's strip ball dancer has been terrible. Two critical fails. One in thirty-six fails. Nope, double one there as well. But still, it's already... Like, look how hard this is. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything's based. And even if things work, it's still bad. Undead do struggle versus woodies, don't they? Oh, he hasn't got clear of that guy. He's going to power and make him... Oof. Maybe should have started with that so that you knew whether it was a power or not, right? It's the rush. Definitely should have just blocked. Because you can re-roll the block, right? So it's just better. The, the block is the same chance of failure. One in nine, except you can then re-roll that one in nine chance. With the upside of, you might just kill this guy. So you absolutely million percent have to just block this guy first. Probably just wants to get all this stuff that's lying on the ground back in front, I would say now. Which is this guy? Now this guy's KO'd instead of the <laughs> instead of the wood elf being KO'd.
tag out the tackler with the lineman. Great play. got frenzy and strip ball everybody everybody has a strip ball dancer and then the other one is tackle frenzy or sidestep generally um, tackle is obviously better if Amazons exist some people like frenzy a hell of a lot and uh, I quite like the sidestep I, I think I like the sidestep the most because uh, it helps you know stopping one turns and scoring one turns which is pretty good to have uh, there's also a mighty blow dancer in this because you can give them a double, but normally in tabletop you can't do that. So having a mummy cage corner normally isn't so bad, but when it's based on a tree, <laughs> it's a little bit worse. Um... <laughs> Yeah, this is, a, this is a tiny problem. And it's the first thing he does. Didn't get the power, but you know, does open up the ball to the 1D. It doesn't go for the 1D on the ball. It probably makes sense after seeing his, his stripper fail every single hit. <laughs> Let's not even try to hit the ball. The strip dancer, yeah. Gets the pals. It's turn six. We're going to see a dodges and stuff. Yeah, there's one. There's another one. Smashes the catcher at least. Uphill. <laughs> Uphills the uh, tree and gets him down, which normally be great, right? Four plus to stand up the tree. But Olivia Delax tree gets up every time. Instantly. It's weird though, because one of the best thing about the tree is people waste their time hitting it, right? And if it's gonna jump up every time, it makes them less likely to waste their time hitting it, I would have thought. Blitzers. Now he's got a full elf screen. Turn six, still inside his half. This is basically impossible for the undead to score. Oof. A spicy rush indeed. He's lost all his zombies, by the way. He's been massively outbashed by wood elves. So he had to get lucky and has instead had absolutely zero luck. Well, he's going to scoring range. No, he hasn't! <laughs> he double wand and KO'd himself. Oh, God. <laughs> look at this massacre. <laughs> Oh dear, so all he has to do is push this ghoul and it's, success it's a successful defense. So, you know, safe moves first, get a catcher in scoring range. No, so I think this is a mistake here by ODL. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, this catcher could have just been in range. I feel like that definitely should have just gone into range first. Uh, 
Because it's no dice, right? Like, it's no dice rolls to get this guy into range. So, you know, he, he, he left 1 in 36s. He had to roll 2 1 in 36s. Well, he had to roll a 1 in 36 to get the first threat and then another one to get a second one. Whereas he could have had this one as a threat for zero dice rolls. So I think that is what he should have done. Now this is, you know, you can say that this is stronger, right? Because now he's got him here instead of over there. But I feel like it was better to be safer. But I could be wrong. And it could be better to make those 3% players. He's certainly being cast though. The thing is now as well, he can blitz one with tackle and base the other with tackle, right? Interesting, interesting. Does the 1D, the school can go like here maybe? Maybe there. Probably don't want to base him. Maybe you do want to base him. But if, if by basing him now you can like chain this guy out, right? You could dodge in it there with dodge and then blitz him and chain him to here. Oh, he's got frenzy. So he was going to push him and then chain the tackle off him. So I didn't even think of Frenzy. Five plus catch. Yes, use catch. Works. And then he fails a three plus dodge because he's stuck on tackle. So there you go. Wow. You no know, good defense by Shirts in the end, right? With like no players. Even though he was on offense, he, he definitely turned to defense there with just getting ridiculously outbashed by Wood Elves. He's, uh... This isn't so bad, right? Honestly, like, failing your offense like that isn't so bad against Wood Elves, right? Or, or, like, anybody, because when you have to win, because at least now, you're still in more or less the same situation you were at the start of the match. You've got to, like, you know, you've got to have a successful defense to win the game. Like, because you have to get a successful defense to win the game. Normally, like, stopping your opponent scoring, but now it just upgrades how successful your defense has to be. <laughs> but it always had to be successful, so... Strangely, not so bad. Instant double AV break. Oh, the officious ref was a stunned, a stunned mummy. That's a bit tragic. So four players stunned <laughs> against Wood Elves. <laughs> God. <laughs> nice dice, mate. Where'd you get them? Flip me. And, you know, he's, he's, he's doing things, isn't he? A fair play to shirts. He's really, uh, he's really trying to roll all the dice and make things happen. Oh, fails a three plus. He's got half a chance. The stripper is right there though with the two plus because he failed the uh, one in nine. Goes for the tree block. One in twenty-seven chance of failure. Gets a Kaz. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> Gets the strip. And he can definitely beat off this guy. And pick it up on another catcher. But, you know, picking up the catcher is... Oh, no, he's got to re-roll it. The catcher is only strength two, so... Oh. It's another cast. This is horrendous. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Rolls another one, at least. And then catches over there. 
How ridiculous is this? You have to win against Olivier de Lac and you're undead and he's Woody's and he just makes four stuns on turn one and then two removals on turn two. <laughs> oh, God. It is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. No regen for the go. Tragedy. Add that to the list of the Dicings. Unbelievable. <laughs> Fails the dodge. Removed. He's had four stuns and three removals. In two turns. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous, isn't it? That is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> In a must-win game versus the number one ranked player on tabletop. That's what you get. <laughs> no, it's, as a viewer, it's always funny. That's the great thing, isn't it? This, this is so unfair that it swings back to funny as well when you're playing it, right? When, you, when you're playing it, you, you stop being so disgusted at how unfair it is and just start laughing at the absurdity of it. This is looking pretty over. He's got, like, no players. Three of his players are stuck on the tree. And on movement, four. And that's four plus. Two of his players are movement, three. So he can't do anywhere or do anything. So he's got... Didn't die, though. Only stunned. That's, that's an improvement. He can surf this, uh, this ghoul, probably, this turn. Which is how ridiculous the game is. In fact, he doesn't need any support whatsoever, so I would have gone for the surf. I would have absolutely surfed this. I would have absolutely surfed that go. A million percent. I might have even tried to surf the, the mummy as well, just for fun. <laughs> I might have, even, might have even tried to surf the mummy too. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. Oh! Instead, he makes a dice roll with a with a frenzy dancer. Oh, he's gonna try and surf this guy. This is a bunch of rolls, actually. So I don't really like this, but makes him and he surfs him. That's okay, then, I guess. Again, he was so far away that I would I would rather surf the uh, Gao. and then he gets the tree onto the ghoul as well. Nice. Got a rush, right? Yeah, you got a double rush there. I wouldn't have had him contactable by. I wouldn't have had anybody contactable by the money, right? Because you just run away from him. <laughs> Even though he's movement five, you can just continuously run away from him. So that was a, that was a bit sloppy by uh, Olivier. Understandable. He's probably. <laughs> He's probably laughing his ass off right now and not really concentrating too hard on the game of Blood Bowl that he still has to play. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Now we can have like a double screen to stop them me doing anything. Double screen and then blitz the uh, the ghoul. And power him and remove him. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I don't think uh, there's anything else that can happen when Olivia hits an undead player. <laughs> Pow. Not a removal. Wow. Luckiest day of shirts is life. First the mummy was only stunned, then the zombie was only stunned. What's going on? <laughs> oh wow, he's gone for the double dodge! He, 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 you know, he had the chance, the, the, or the triple dodge. No, double dodge. But now it's, now it's over. 
And he can foul the he can foul the mummy if he probably is probably what he's gonna do, right? Because there's kinda of no reason not to. You you're outnumbering them so badly that even he can't even hit you with a mummy anymore if you're surrounded. I mean, I would have predicted Olivier winning, but not like this. <laughs> what a crazy game. Yeah, only stun? Yeah. What an absolutely crazy game. Yeah, Olivier did indeed smash the group stage, yeah. I mean, it does certainly help when this is this is what happens when you face. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> when you absolutely slaughter undead, it's hard not to win as wood elves. But yeah, the other games he won as well. Yeah, won all of his games. Imagine having a stress-free tournament, that would have been, well, not tournament, stress-free group stage. I would have loved to have swapped places with him in uh, in those games because, boy howdy, were my games stressful. <laughs> Three if he makes a turn, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Olivia Delac probably made in one game the amount of, uh, the amount of AV breaks and removals you'd expect in the entire group stage. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> he threw it to him. <laughs> Why not? So, wow. What a game. I hope it'll take us to the thing. Yeah, I want to see the stats. Let's see the stats. He made 33 blocks and broke AV 20 times. <laughs> Seven KOs, two Kaz. Yeah, I think he made more Kaz, right? I think because he regens some. Wow, 20 AV breaks of 33 blocks is kind of insane. He did make some fouls as well. Does it tell you how many fouls he made? Yeah, only two. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable comedy mega dicing. And not only, like, it always sucks when you get, you know, dice that hard. But then just to, just to add... <laughs> <laughs> insult to injury it was a game that you had to win against Olivier Dulac so yeah that was that was rough that was a rough game for shirts for sure and that is the updated group stage you can see Olivier Dulac three wins out of three definitely wins his group and he will be joined by Zahu or Teddy Tom um, if it's a draw Zahu qualifies if, if, if Zahu wins he qualifies but if Teddy Tom can get the victory, he will join Olivia Dulac in the knockout stage. So there you go. Congratulations, Olivia. Commiserations, shirts. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.